for taking the time to download this BBC Radio 5 Live podcast. To search for other podcasts you might like, click bbc.co.uk slash 5 Live, where you'll also find our terms of use. Why did the Department for Culture, Media and Sport change the job spec for the chair of the BBC Trust at the last minute? And was it to suit a particular candidate? It's the closing date for applications today. Whoever is selected will be expected to speak up on behalf of licence fee payers. The deadline was originally last Friday, but 24 hours before, the DCMS changed the job description from requiring the candidate to work three to four days per week, as now, to suggesting that the winning candidate could work less than that. And they also extended the deadline for applying by a week. We asked the Culture Department why. They told us this. We will consider any suitable candidates who can commit to less than three to four days a week. It is essential we appoint the best possible person to the position. It's a highly paid, high profile role. The job description says the successful candidate will provide effective leadership of the BBC Trust as the champion of the interests of licence fee payers. All that for £110,000 a year and they'd have to help steer the BBC through any challenges the corporation might face. In recent years, there have been quite a few. Today, BBC bosses will meet to discuss the fate of Jonathan Ross. The Director-General Mark Thompson will report to the corporation's governing body on the prank call scandal. Uh, Russell Brand quit the BBC last night. I only do that radio show because I want to make people laugh and make people happy, and obviously I'm making people unhappy and angry and sad. It's been a bad day for the BBC. We're no further forward on the really important issue of whether the BBC and other organisations fail to protect vulnerable children from an aggressive, egotistical child molest called Jimmy Savile. This programme investigated the claims almost a year ago and never broadcast what it found out. The chairman of the BBC Trust, Lord Patton, has promised a radical overhaul of BBC management following the resignation of the Director-General last night. Lord Patton said that George Entwistle had been overwhelmed by the fallout from allegations surrounding Jimmy Savile and the Newsnight report into child abuse. It's just been revealed that the BBC spent almost £5 million on three inquiries set up after the Jimmy Savile scandal. There's pressure tonight on the BBC to sack the TV presenter Jeremy Clarkson after the Daily Mirror published a video in which the paper says Clarkson used the N-word. So who wants the job of BBC Chairman of the Trust? Several are thought to be in the running, including Diane Coyle, who's been acting chairwoman since Lord Patton stepped down because of poor health last month. And there's Lord Coe. When I spoke to him on this programme earlier this month, I asked him if he wanted to be chairman of the BBC Trust? The honest answer to that is I've probably got until the end of June to think about that. It is a very meaty job. I'm a passionate believer in public service broadcasting. I was brought up to it. I was, you know, I've been the subject of it in, in my athletics career. And, and, you know, the BBC were our partners during the bid and then the delivery of the games. But the, the honest answer to that is I probably have a few weeks to think about it. Will you be applying then? It sounds like you will. Not sure. Have you been approached formally? No. Have you been approached informally? I have conversations about all sorts of things all the time. I'm not going to maintain a running commentary on that, but have I had conversations with the BBC? No. Have I had conversations with the Department of Culture, Media and Sport? No. Have I spoken to headhunters? No. Have you had uh, private conversations with uh, senior figures in the conservative bit of the coalition government about this role? I'm not maintaining a running commentary on that. I have conversations with all sorts of people about all sorts of things all the time. That's not a denial, so I'm, I am going to take that as a yes then. Uh, what qualifications do you have, do you think, to be chairman of the BBC Trust? Uh, th th this is highly speculative and I'm certainly not, <laughs> I'm certainly not running through you know, what I've done in my life on, on, on this programme. Um, I, I've got some thinking to do and that's where it currently is. Mm. As a Conservative peer, could you be an independent chairman of the BBC Trust? Uh, I've always been highly independent in everything I've ever done. Um, my politics are, are clear and a matter of public record, and I certainly wouldn't be sort of walking a, away from my political beliefs. When you were asked about whether you wanted to be London Mayor a couple of years ago in an interview in The Guardian, you were absolutely emphatic. You said, no, I'm not interested in it, absolutely not. Can you be as emphatic now? Uh, I was very, I was clear and emphatic and, and, and still remain that say, the same. I, I spent 
uh, a very interesting 10, 12, actually arguably 15 years in politics. It's, it's not what I wanted to go back to, and I, I could very clearly say that. Mm. But you can't about this, obviously. I hope you won't be as evasive in your BBC job interview. <laughs> How many jobs do you have at the moment? The Daily Mail reckons unpaid and paid. It, it's 20. Could you run through them for us? Uh, well, I'm not actually sure how you make that. I mean, I have one office that I go to every day, and when I'm not there, I'm normally at the British Olympic Association, and if I'm not there, I'm probably travelling. And I guess if you rolled up all the non-paid things I do in terms of trusts and charities and foundations and my BOA work and my International Athletics Federation work... It certainly doesn't get to 20, but yes, I have a varied and very enjoyable life. Lord Coe speaking on this programme earlier this month. So is it possible to do the job of chair of the BBC Trust in fewer days a week than Lord Patton did? And will licence fee payers get value for money from someone who can work less than three days a week for £110,000 a year? Let's talk now to the Shadow Culture Secretary, Harriet Harman, and to former BBC Chairman Sir Christopher Bland. Welcome both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Harriet Harman, is it, is it possible to do the job and spend less time on it than Lord Patton did? Well, I think it's not possible to do the job for two days. I mean, think of what an enormous and incredibly important and valued and valuable organisation the BBC is. And this is the person, the chair of the trust, which is to represent the interests of the licence fee payers. And actually, at a a difficult time, because we're coming up to the charter review and the review of the licence fee, and there have been the problems about the Jimmy Savile and executive pay, and there's opportunities with technological change uh, going forward in the future. So I think that without discussing it with anybody, suddenly to say, oh, we don't think this needs three to four days, we think it only needs two days, and present this as a fait accompli. When this is, you know, the government does not own the BBC. It doesn't belong to any particular government. And for them to do this, I think is is worrying, it's high-handed, it's inexplicable, and they they should have given us an explanation. I did actually write to Sajiv Javid when Chris Patton said he was going to stand down, and incidentally, he said it was ten times harder the job than he thought it was going to be, and he was working three and four days a week. Um, So basically, I said, this is a very important appointment. We need to work together on it because there's got to be a sense that the person that takes this job can command the confidence of everybody, and it's not to be seen as a political stitch-up. So goodness knows what's going on, but I feel suspicious and concerned. Well, why do you think the job description was changed? Why do I think it was changed? Mm. Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I can only assume. I mean, the only assumption is that somehow there's one person who's very busy for the other three days of the week doing things that they think are more important, and they're not prepared, therefore, to come forward to do it for the three to four days that it at least requires and therefore the government has said okay we'll change the job description so you can fit this in as a side issue but the other problem is is we need a strong chair of the bbc trust because the government the the many people on the government benches are not very favorable to the bbc and think it's a terrible state monopoly and I don't want the idea that the government sort of takes over the BBC Trust because we've got a weak chair. We need a strong chair who is able to speak up for the licence fee payers against the government if necessary, against what's going on in the BBC if necessary. And I think two days a week, well, I mean, I just don't think, I just don't think it's right. So you have a suspicion that the job description was changed to suit a particular candidate. Who is that candidate? Well, possibly to suit a particular candidate and possibly to downgrade the role so that the government can more or less take over. I've no idea. I mean, I've no idea. I mean, I heard your very interesting interview with Lord Coe. But in a way, it's less about who they're lining it up for than the fact that they're probably lining it up for one person. And anyway, it doesn't matter who this person is. They can't do it as a fag end of their week. It's got to be a really central issue for somebody because the licence fee payers who are all paying £145.50 and who all love the BBC and which is important for this whole country need somebody who's going to be prepared to deign to give it more of their attention than just two days a week. Right. As a former BBC chairman, Sir Christopher Bland, can this job be done on two days a week? No. It needs at least three days a week and it's a weird job because there are weeks in which one day and two will be fine but when things get difficult and they always do at the BBC from time to time, then it's a five, six, seven-day-a-week job. So it fluctuates. But the idea that you could commit to less than three, I think, is fantasy. 
Why do you think the job description was changed to say that uh, they would encourage candidates who could only commit for two days a week? Then? Well, I don't have Harriet Harman's advanced conspiracy theory, but I do think it's probably because they were disappointed at the number of candidates that applied. At the number rather than the quality? Well, m but both. Right. And, and uh, they thought wrongly that the way to deal with this is to shorten the number of days, and that's a mistake. And they'll find that out. Well, they know that already. I mean, just looking at, at, at Lord Patton's time as chair of the trust, uh, uh, as far as I recall, you, you had a fewer number of scandals on your watch, if I can put it like that, but, but, but they know it's a busy job. It's a big job. There's always a row at the BBC. The question is, is it a big one or a little one? If it's a big one, can you do anything about it? And if you can't, sit back and wait for the next one to arrive. But it does need three days a week. It, it is, at the end of the day, the responsibility of an independent committee of three people. And it's suggested that one of the three should be the cabinet secretary. If that's true, that's very odd. Right. Well, that, that's a report in today's yeah. Daily Mail that suggesting that one of the three people that will interview for this job will be the cabinet secretary. Why, why does that worry you? Well, because it's a departure from practice. It's always been the uh, permanent secretary in the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, and that's appropriate. He should know most about what the BBC really needs. And they've got two pretty good independent members of that committee, Carolyn Fairbairn, who knows a lot about broadcasting, and uh, they should be trusted to do a decent job and also to fall short of coming to the conclusion that somebody with a high profile who says, I'll do it, but only two days a week, they shouldn't appoint him or her on that basis. Can, can I just butt in here to say that I haven't got an advanced conspiracy theory, as Lord Brand has, Brand has rather patronisingly said. I've said I don't know why they've dropped it down from three to four days, down to two days. I'm saying I don't think the job can be done in two days by anybody, how excellent they are. And when asked why they've done this, all I can do is conjecture. So I'm, I haven't got a conspiracy theory, and I'd rather you didn't say that in well, a you've rather patronising way. Uh, it's not patronising, and by the way, I'm not a lord, so don't patronise me either. Uh, you've got a conspiracy conjecture. I haven't. I'm just saying that I think the job can't be done in two days, and actually we're agreeing on that. We have. We'd agree. The DCMS have told us that they've extended the deadline and, and changed the job spec to encourage... Uh, the best candidates to apply. It is essential, quote, we appoint the best possible person to the position. Yes, the best person, but also they've got to have enough time and it doesn't matter whether they're, you know, the messiah. If it's only two days a week and they're doing it as a fag end, that's, that's the problem. It's a really big job and it's a really important job. Any, anybody who doesn't commit to three days a week shouldn't get the job. And by the way, the only candidate that we know has applied is the present acting chairman, Diane Coyle. And it would be a rather wonderful thing if the BBC, which has never had a woman chairman, never had a woman director general, actually appointed her. She's a default candidate in one sense, but she do the job very well. And the important thing is she knows what a difficult and from time to time horrible job it is. Listening to the clips that you played earlier about rows at the BBC would deter anybody from applying for this job. Mm. But at least Diane Coyle knows what she's letting herself in for if she's applied. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Uh, former BBC chairman Sir Christopher Bland. Thank you too to Shadow Culture Secretary Harriet Harman. <laughs> On digital and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. bbc.co.uk slash 5 Live.